What's up everybody, Zach McDonald, your real estate agent, and I got Dan Keller with me here today. What's Ranch up, manager, Cross Country Mortgage. Today we're gonna talk a little bit about rates. We're gonna talk about the bubble, if you wanna call it that. And we're gonna talk a little bit about just some financial literacy together here in this time. So why don't we start off with what everybody really wants to talk about, and that's the bubble. I know you've got some thoughts on that, Dan. So I'd love to hear kind of how you're having these conversations and then what your opinion is about where the Seattle and uh, local real estate market is. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, it's something that's on everyone's mind right now. You know, I can remember back when, you know, I was a young homeowner and uh, it was 06 to 07 and 08. Well, in 06 and 07, no one was really talking about a bubble. It was, oh my gosh, you can buy a home. Yeah. And my wife and I being, you know, newly married and starting a family, we did that. We did exactly that. And then the bubble happened and mm -hmm. then it popped and the house that we bought for 375 or 325,000 went up to 460,000 and then went down to 220, 220,000. That's not good. Not good. No. But I think what people are missing is that was a once in a, I want to say, not even a lifetime, even greater than a lifetime event that happened. You know, there was fraud that took place. Mm -hmm. There was a lack of regulation that caused that and a lot of greed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since then, you know, the Obama administration came in, established Dodd-Frank, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, mm -hmm. a lot of measures that are still in place in 2021 and 2022. They, they're not going anywhere. Nope to prevent all of that fraud and all of that from ever happening again. And so you have to understand prior to 2006, 2008, Zach, nobody talked about real estate bubbles. Hmm. So yeah. when I have these conversations with clients and with friends and professionals like you, let's eliminate 2006 to 2008 because that will not happen again with these regulations. Therefore, there's no bubble. What's a bubble? Okay, so when people are referring to a bubble, their youngsters are referring to what their parents or people my age yep. went through mm -hmm. in 2006 to 2008. So because we're not going to go through that again, we're not experiencing the same situation. I don't like to refer to anything right now that we're seeing as a bubble because it just mm. it's not it's not going to happen. And it doesn't exist. Mm. How I like to explain what we're seeing right now is simply a supply and demand issue one. It's a big okay? part of it. And then number two, in the Seattle marketplace, the, the, the Puget Sound, we have more people that are relocating to this area than we have houses for. And I'm talking apartments and single family homes. Certainly. Now, on top of all of that, where I come into play, what I do for a living, mm -hmm. mortgage finance, mortgage interest rates, or the cost for financing a home is lower than it's ever been. All right. So you take supply and demand issues, mm -hmm. you take a major, hot, robust, healthy jobs market. I think everyone can agree that Seattle has one of the top jobs markets in America. And then you talk about the affordability of financing, low interest rates. That's the market that we're in right now. That is not your traditional bubble. Mm -hmm. That does not define a bubble. That defines a healthy real estate market. Where it gets a little bit unhealthy is the fact that certain population of home buyers just are not getting a fair opportunity right now to purchase. That's true. So I wrap this all up and close this down with what you need to pay attention to right now is interest rates. As interest rates go up, we will not see a bubble pop. Hmm. We'll see a slowing down of appreciation or a slowing down of the market. Maybe more people will be reaching out to you to sell their home mm -hmm. and it might take you a little bit longer to sell that home. What, longer than like a week? Yeah, maybe like a month or two, right? Which is a normal, like a healthy market, right? <laughs> yeah. So that's probably the most important thing I am encouraging people to pay attention to right now are interest rates. As soon as interest rates start going up, you're gonna start seeing home values not go up at, what did King County go up last year? Like almost 20 something percent? Close to 20% on yeah. average, yeah. So instead of 20% appreciation, mm -hmm. you might go back to the healthy norm of seven to 12%. Which is just totally healthy. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. So what are some of the other factors that play outside of supply and demand and interest rates 
that you, we, you could look at the situation now and say, ah, we're not in a bubble. What are some of the other things that you're looking at aside mm -hmm. from those things? Again, to follow up on the three factors that we just talked about that, um, that really help show that we're not in a bubble, that this is a healthy market and somewhat sustainable. You have to go back to 06, and these are, this is data. So I wanna preface this, this is data that you can find on the internet for the county that you live in, all right? So I'm not just sitting here going, oh, this is my opinion. If you go back to 2006, for example, in King County, and you look at home affordability. So okay. a home in 2006, in the, in the peak of the, the previous market that collapsed, right? Mm -hmm. That particular home has gone up 41% since the last peak of the la since the peak of the last housing market and that's across king county across king county for example and it basically it's across the us but we went right into king county it's like 41 42 mm percent -hmm. so that home that was worth for example four hundred thousand dollars in 2006 is now worth five let's just say 555 60 ish right something around mm -hmm. that that range people are like oh my gosh home values have gone way up what I need to explain and what you need to understand as a home buyer or a home owner, yes, home values have in 15 years gone up 41%. That's a lot, maybe outside of the normal healthy range, but get this, that same home that Mr. and Mrs. Smith bought in 2006, that same home that's worth now 41% more is $52 a month less expensive to buy right now. Explain that. So even though the home value went up, 30-year mm -hmm. fixed rates right now are 3% or under. Mm -hmm. So they're lower. 30-year fixed rates in 2006 were five and a half, six percent 6%. So don't focus on home values per se. Don't focus on the bubble and the fear and the, what the media is gonna tell you. Mm -hmm. Focus on the facts. The facts mm -hmm. of the matter are in 2021, it's more affordable to purchase a house right now in King County than it was in 2006. But here, it keeps getting better. It's kind of crazy to think this about it This is that what's way. gonna seal the deal and what makes a ton of sense. Nobody's talking about this. This is why you work with a professional like me, because I understand That's why this we're stuff. having this conversation, it's good. Get this, household income mm -hmm. in King County in 2006, total household income was approximately $76,000 a year. Today, it's almost $120,000 a year. So not only is home affordability more afford affordable, housing is more affordable today than it was in 06, mm -hmm. homeowners are saving 30% more each month as a result of their income going up as well. Wow. So are we headed toward a bubble, something that's unhealthy, something that's gonna pop and collapse? Financially, no. Financially, no. Homeowners are in a better position today in 2021 than they were in 06. So it sounds like a lot of it has to do with interest rates and we've got a lot of um, competition, obviously. There's a lot of demand for not enough supply and then we also have incomes yep. uh, going up. It also sounds like people are saving more so they're in a better financial position. Yep. They might not have to sell their house immediately if there was a tough time. And it also seems like there's quite a bit of equity in people's houses. Yep. Yep. So it seems like we are in a pretty stable spot. It sounds very like you stable. would say. Yeah. Very stable, considering in 2006 to 2007 and eight, mm -hmm. fake money, yep. okay? Fake approvals, because they were people that were qualifying for mortgages back then were qualifying for no income, no asset type loans. If you had a good credit score and you had a little bit of money down, oh, we're not gonna verify your employment, it's okay. There was fraud, a lot of fraud. Now, I wasn't in the mortgage industry back then, but I'm telling you, my wife and I bought our first home, Zach, and she was a barista. What did you do for work? I was personal training athletes and making a majority of my money cash on the side. So Basically, no not a W two, yeah, not a W two employee, and so is this beyond the time the IRS can come after you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we were claiming we, we were claiming that. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Because here's the thing, we were paying taxes on that. My point is, I, Jenny and I would not have qualified for a mortgage in 2006. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't have because we didn't have documentable two, two years of documentable income. Now today, from 2008 on, every single, you know this, every single one of your clients has to go through what's called underwriting mm -hmm. at a lender. 
and we you've bought homes and I've you know mm-hmm. helped you guys with mortgages. Yeah. You know it's difficult. Mm-hmm. Especially being a self-employed mm-hmm. business person. So, yeah, it's a completely different environment. It's healthy. Mm-hmm. Don't listen to the fear. Listen to the pros. Don't listen to the media. Listen to the pros. Hmm.